Hey guys, Aaron here back in the garage again. Today I want to learn when and why to use relays and how they work. So I did a lot of research, I watched a lot of videos, some that were really good and some that were really bad, but none of them really answered all of the questions that I had about relays. So I bought some parts to experiment with and wanted to share with you guys what I learned. But before getting into what a relay is or does, you really need to understand the electrical circuits in your car. If you're not familiar with them already, I did a video on that previously. I'm gonna put a link up here on the corner. So go check that video out, get familiar with it, and then come right back here. Now in their simplest form, a relay is a specialized switch. Here is a simple switch, and probably what you think of when you hear the word switch, you've seen these, you've used these often, you understand what they do. But let me show you quickly how they do it with a little experiment. The simple little experiment I'm going to show you is for the daytime running lights on the new headlights that I just installed because that's the reason I'm researching relays to figure out how to best install them. So coming out of the back of my headlight housing, I have a red and a black wire. The red is connected to a positive terminal on this battery here. And when I connect the black wire to the negative terminal, you can see that our daytime running lights turn on. So very simple circuit. All it has is a positive and a ground and it works. It's pretty obvious to you why you wouldn't wire this just directly to the battery because then your daytime running lights would always be running even when you turn the car off and your battery would drain. So this is where switches come in. So you can see that I still have the negative connected straight to the negative terminal and I have the positive connected to a switch to one of the poles on the switch and another pole has the positive continuing back to our headlight. So all the switch does is interrupt the current from flowing from these two points when the switch is in the off position. So as you know, when you guys turn a switch on, it connects those two poles physically and current is able to flow through there and complete the circuit and turn on the light. This is the wiring diagram that came with our switch. It's not a super simple switch because a lot of switches will just have two poles. This one actually has a little LED light on it. And that's what the third pole, the copper one is for. So if we just splice into our ground wires, a connector that connects to that. Now, when we look at our switch and it is off, everything is still off. Now, when you turn the switch on, not only does the light turn on, but the little light on the switch turns on to let you know that it's on so you don't forget about it and leave it on. But that leads us directly into why you might want to use a relay. Now here is a relay. You might hear this being referred to as a Bosch type or a single pole double throw relay, SPDT. So relays are switches that are controlled by electrical power instead of being controlled by physically switching or flipping it. The purpose of a relay is to automate this power to switch electrical circuits on and off at particular times. For example, when you start your car or when you turn your car off. If you look at the back of the relay, you will see five pins. These things are called pins. And all relays of this type look the same and do the same thing. The pins are numbered and printed right on the back. And these are standard numbers and will always be the same. So you can see starting at the top is 87. Down here in the middle is 87A, 86, 30, and 85. So the numbers on the back tell us how the relay should be wired. And there's actually a diagram on the back, but it's kind of... Hard to see sometimes and confusing until you really understand it, but uh, it is a good reminder after you do understand the concept of a relay. So this is one of the diagrams I found online and it is a Bosch type relay, sometimes called SPDT or single pole double throw. And it shows you clearly here the numbers that correspond with the pins. You can see that they are actually in the same layout orientation as on the relay itself. So this diagram is of the same relay. You can just see that the numbers for the pins are not exactly in the correct location, but it spreads them out and places them in an easier to understand way of what they're actually doing. 
in just a minute, I will open up and show you the inside of the actual relay, but this picture is kind of depicting what it looks like on the inside. This right here is a bunch of wire coiled up and it creates an electromagnetic coil when you run voltage through it. So when you run positive current through pin number 86 and you have this connected to a negative ground and you complete this circuit, the electricity is going to go through this coil and create an electromagnetic field. So this essentially then becomes a magnet. Like I said, this diagram shows you when it is inactive and there is no power. So there is actually a physical switch that goes from pin 30 to pin 87A. But when you actually apply that current to it, the magnet takes this switch and pulls it over towards itself as magnets tend to do. And that means that pins 30 and 87 are now connected. So if we draw a line here, this part on the left, you could consider the control piece of the switch. And the part on the right is actually the physical switch that we are replacing our standard switch with. So in the example of our standard switch, when it is in the off position, pin 30 and pin 87A are connected. And then when we flip the switch, pin 30 and pin 87 are connected. So instead of manually pressing or flipping a switch, this switch is controlled by a magnet. So right here is one of the relays that I bought for the demo and I literally just cut through it with a little rotary tool, a little Dremel, and pulled the back off so you can see what is inside these. So the reason they're so big is because most of the space in here is taken up by this coiled up wire that makes our electromagnetic coil. And if we zoom in here, we can see that this mechanism is our switch. So I can physically press the switch back and forth. And they call this the spring. I guess some relays maybe have a physical spring in here, but you can see that this one is a thin piece of metal that is flexed over to the left. So you have to physically press it over to the right. But you can see when this thing becomes a magnet, it will automatically pull this contact over here. And this pin, if we follow it down, goes right here to this terminal. And if we look at it, and when we can see it in the light, you can see that that is 87. So in our diagram here, 87, when it is powered on, When it is not powered, it is in its resting position and it goes to this pole. And it's kind of hard to see, but it follows that little diagonal piece of metal over there and goes to the center. And the center, and the center pin, as you can see here, is 87A. When it is powered off, 87A. When the magnet is on, 87. So if we look at the ends of the magnet, where the power would go through the magnet to create that coil, it is on either edge of this. And you can see that those are pins 85 and 86. So the pins on the outside here are the pins on the outside of the magnet. So just like our diagram shows, when power is flowing through the magnet, it pulls it over. So you can physically see exactly how this relay works. Real quickly, I just wanted to tell you about another type of relay. There is a single pole, single throw relay. And what that is, is essentially exactly the same thing, except there is no 87A. There are only two pins that are physically connected internally that are both 87. So the actual back of the relay, now this is not that kind of relay. This is the same one I just showed you, but the single pull, single throw actually have the same configuration on the back. Instead of having an 87 and an 87A, they're just both labeled 87. And there is no pin coming from over here. It's just internally disconnected from anything on the outside. So let's come back into here with our example project and let's try to take the example we used with a switch and replace that switch with the use of a relay. So one other piece of information I wanna give you before we show this is that the 12 volt DC relay switches are the best solution for full voltage applications as they allow a low current flow circuit to control a high current flow circuit. 
like a vehicle's horn, headlights, auxiliary lamps, fan motors, blower motors, and countless other pieces of equipment that exist on vehicles today. So to kind of demonstrate that, what I'm going to be using here is a low current flow circuit, which is just a direct connection from our battery positive back to our battery negative. So there is no load that is drawing anything through here. It is just a continuous circuit that is gonna be used to create this magnet. And then anything you connect through here can be a high current flow circuit. So this is a great application for having something that draws a high current through here because these things are actually built for that. It says on here somewhere. 30 to 40 amp. So it can take a lot more than a little switch like this. So if you try to run a lot of current through a little switch that's not made for it, it can burn up and you do not want that to happen. Okay, so back to our example, I'm going to use this exposed open one just so you can see the internals of what goes on. So I'm just gonna start out with the switch we had in our previous experiment. This wire is connected to the positive terminal on our battery and it goes through our switch so we can interrupt the circuit. And I'm gonna take our positive, just like our diagram here, and go into pin 86. So I'm just gonna clip it right on 86. So I'm just gonna clip it right on 86. And then as you can see, 85 goes to our negative terminal. So I'm just gonna clip this right onto 85. Okay, so since no current is flowing through here because our switch is turned off, you can see that the switch on the inside of this is over to the left. And if I take our physical switch and turn it on to connect the circuit, you can see that inside the relay, it goes over to the left. Turn it off. The magnetic field is stopped and it gets pulled back over to pin 87A. Turn it on. It's on pin 87. And also this little physical going back and forth is why you can hear relays click sometimes when they get turned on. That is our control side done. Now let's move over to the switch side and see what we need to do. So our positive for the load is gonna come into pin 30. Now this usually comes in from a positive on your fuse panel because like I mentioned, this is typically used for a high current flow circuit. So we want something that you can put a fuse on in case this pulls too much to uh, break your fuse instead of breaking your car. So for our example, we're just gonna be feeding it straight from the battery. So I will make another connection from the positive terminal on the battery to pin 30. So to make it a little easier to see what's going on, I'm going to take a yellow wire, connect it to that positive, and then I'm going to connect it to pin 30 down here on the bottom. Next, we want to be able to connect pin 87 because when we turn this thing on, we want the power to flow from 30 to 87 and 87 goes to our load. And our load in this case is the daytime running lights. So I'm gonna take another yellow wire and connect it to 87, which is the one on top. And I'm going to have that be connected to the positive of our daytime running lights. And now for the negative, the black wire on our daytime running lights, it can just run directly back to any ground in your car. So for us, we will connect it back to the negative terminal on the battery. And now we should have a working relay. So I have not tried this yet, so I will test it under pressure with you guys. So the wiring should be simple enough that when we turn this switch on, which allows the current to flow through our relay and trigger our relay, Yes, you can see in the background that the lights came on. So to wire up a relay is really as simple as that. I hope these concepts are clear to you guys. Now, one question you might ask is, why would you ever use 87A? Why do they have that there? The answer is, I don't know. No, well, if you have something connected to 87A, this is always going to be connected when your relay is off. So if you have a circuit here, this would always be running. So you could do something like wire a little light here so that the light is on when your circuit is off, but that doesn't really make any sense. The only time that I have seen it be used is when you use multiple relays together. 
For example, when I did the heated seats, that was my first experience with relays, but I had no idea then how they worked. I just followed the diagram and hooked them up like I was told to. But I do know that 87A, that pin in the middle, was used sometimes on it because I used four relays connected together to make a latching relay. So maybe in a later video, I will revisit that and kind of figure out and describe how latching relays work. And that relay that I created leads me to one more piece of information for you guys. This diagram here shows a single pole double throw with a shorting diode. So this little diagram here is supposed to be a diode. That's how they look in wiring diagrams. This is what an actual diode looks like. Okay, well, this is a bunch of diodes each one has a little black pill kind of in the middle with wire coming out of each end. So one thing about a relay is if you do have a high current load on one end and you flip it off, a lot of times there can be a voltage spike that comes from your load back to the relay. So what that diode does, instead of letting that voltage spike go back through pin 86, it dissipates it and also dissipates it, I guess, into the magnetic coil. So by having a diode there, it prevents the voltage spike of the relay deactivation from harming computers and other sensitive electronics that might be involved in your circuit. So in the locking relay that I created, I know that I had to use two of these on some of the relays, and now it makes a little bit more sense. All right, so after that example, back to this diagram, and you may be asking, why do you need this still if you're just going to use a switch to control when the magnet turns on and off? Well, the answer is that was just for my example. So what you would typically do is wire this to a circuit in your car that is only getting current when your car is turned on. So for example, in my Boxster, I will be connecting this to a circuit that is only switched on when the car is turned on. All right, here is another circuit diagram example of an electric fan. And you can see that with the electric fan, this is what I was talking about. You're gonna have a 12 volt source that is only turned on with your ignition. And then on the other end, connected to pin 85 on your ground side, here is where your switch is gonna be. So for example, when your coolant reaches a certain temperature, your thermostat in there is gonna be a switch and it is gonna connect your ground, therefore completing the circuit therefore switching the internal switch to pin 87, which will turn your fan on. And like I mentioned, since 30 is a high current circuit, you're gonna have a fuse before you get to pin 30. So this is a great example showing that you can have this switched either on the positive or the ground side of the circuit, or both in this case. Here's an example circuit diagram for an electric fuel pump. So you might want there to be many ways that trigger it to run. And here you even have an optional dash mounted or impact rollover switch. So if you want the fuel pump to turn off, if it detects that the vehicle is rolled over, or if you want to be able to turn it off yourself, that is how you would wire that. And finally, here is an example using the single pole, single throw relay that I was talking about that only has two pin 87s. And their example for using this is on auxiliary lights. In this example, each light has its own connection to one of those pins. Now I was talking to my buddy about if I should use this one for my LEDs and his response was that these are not very common anymore and not used very often and that by connecting both lights to the single pole double throw, pin 87 was just fine. So if any of you wiring experts out there and relay pros have any other different suggestions or comments about that, please put them in the comments below. So there you have it, guys. I'm definitely not a relay pro, but that's what I've learned in my couple days of research. If you feel that I got something wrong or want to clarify something or expand on something, please do so in the comments below. I hope you guys found the information helpful and the little experimentation. I always love little hands-on projects like this to actually let you see things instead of just drawings and diagrams of things. So if you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Hope you're subscribed to the channel and I'll see you on the next project, which is probably gonna be using the information I learned about relays to wire up those daytime running lights.